Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and it's Monday, November 22nd, 2021, and I'm here for my weekly cross-stitching update. So I've got <clears throat> a good amount of things to share, I guess. May not take too long, but we'll see. <laughs> First off, administratively, there's a sale in my Etsy shop right now. I hadn't looked ahead enough last week to know when it would start, but when I looked, Etsy already had their promotions and stuff starting um, already. So I was like, well... Let's go ahead and start. So it's happening right now. It going, it's going through December 1st um, till midnight Eastern Standard Time, I believe. So it's 20% off all PDFs and print copies of patterns and whatever's left in the fabric offcuts listing. So a few pieces left of that. <clears throat> all those things are 20% off through December 1st. So enjoy. <laughs> for Black Friday and I'll be flashing through some pictures of some of the patterns you can find in my shop in case you're unfamiliar which if you're watching me for a while you probably know but I have a variety of temperature patterns and some like state samplers I have some full coverage I have some little uh some patterns I collaborated with um, my niece that are cute little bird and ladybug patterns and some teapot patterns and or coffee pot I guess at the time hopefully more of those will be coming soon but life's been busy for me and for her <laughs> they moved this past year so um <clears throat> trying to think oh yeah and just in general like poems and things that I've put together over the years my first patterns that I um put together were poems and so that those are some of the things that are in there too. So enjoy that. And I also got some stitchy kindness, stitchy, stitchy gifts, I guess. It was a thank you for watching my in-laws mail for two weeks while they were on vacation. So she found some things on my wish list and gave them to me. So um, one of the things, I guess I'll show these first. A four pack of cute little scissors. There's two stork scissors, pink and gold, and then like a rose gold and blue of, in this style. So I'm excited about those because those will be fun to make sure I have some nice scissors in all of my projects. I've been finding that I have more project bag situations than I used to, and they all come with, came with a little, uh, little uh, a sleeve to put the tip in so when it's in your bag, you don't get um, poked. <laughs> so that's good. I'm excited about those. And then she also got me some planner stickers that I had on my list and some Sharpies. Cause in the reviews on the planner stickers are like, you can't write on these even though there's some blank ones that clearly look like they meant, they're meant to be personalized. I'm like, well, hopefully Sharpies work. I haven't actually tried them but I'm hoping that these Sharpies will write on this. So if I want to make a special sticker heading for a, a acrostic challenge or my whips or something, I could personalize it because I'm planning to use the Lori Holt planner this year. You can find it at the Fat Quarter Shop and it's got at the beginning of the month, let's see, where, where would I probably use these? I guess the dailies. I mean, just a general month spread is is fairly plain, so I can play with it, make it make it pretty with some of the monthly stickers in here, and then there's also like plain note, more note type pages, and I think at the beginning of the month, yeah, they have a general one with some general headings, priorities, shopping, personal goals, health goals, which. I'll, I could like put a new sticker there and make it a new list like this could be my acrostic which I'll talk about in plans that I have a new group I joined and I'm excited about trying that so I could put some like more specific things in there that I want to track so these are some of the stickers thought they were kind of cute they have a special page for each month but then they also have like some general ones and some that are just like uh, check boxes and stuff. Where was one of the ones that was a lot of check boxes? Yeah, I like this one, stars and check boxes. So a lot of things that I'm hoping I can use and have fun with because I've never really done that before with planners. So I think that'll be fun to kind of 
put some pretty stickers on the pages in here and and then personalize it to help me with my with my stitching plans and this one I had received already for my birthday and it's really pretty um, I really like this one so I was torn which one should I use because I was given that that quarter shop one and then I went to a race something in here that I had written in pencil because you know plans change. I need to be able to write my plans in pencil and be able to change them. And the the it's so glossy that you can't really erase it. It's probably meant for a pen, not a pencil. So that was disappointing. So now I'm not sure what to do with this. If I should use it for personal stuff and put in my purse. So we'll see. It's really pretty. <laughs> I'm just not sure yet how I'm going to manage what I'm going to do with that. But that was exciting so i'll be able to get going i think part of the problem with me having some mixed feelings regarding my projects going into the future was because i haven't had time to plan we have a, a thanksgiving home video project that we do every year with my husband's family and that takes up a lot of my november and so i finally finished it on Saturday so I'm very excited I feel like there's a huge weight off my shoulders and I can finally get in and kind of play with some of my projects so which is purely frivolous so it definitely needs to take a back burner to life stuff so I'm thankful that that's done and I can kind of think more about what I want to do and I'll talk more about plans at the end but I, I'm I'm happy to have some time to think about it and to like actually get in get in there with my list of projects and kind of play and see what feels right. So let's talk about what I worked on this week. I, I guess this is, so I talked about wanting to work on, I guess we do, we do travel stitching first, don't we? Let's do that. I've been working on my temperature typography. Once a week usually is enough to keep up on this. In the future, I'm hoping I can keep up on it as well, doing it once a week. And I'm thinking I'll do every other week, I'll work on the borders of the butterflies as well. I'm doing temperature butterflies this coming year. And similar to the trunk, it's something, the tree, I mean, the temperature tree, similar to that is something you can get started early um, because you can get the border or the outline or the trunk or whatever started now. So then in January, you can just start putting in the colorful bits. So hoping, to get started on that before the end of the year, but we'll see. So this is where I'm at now. This one is, my kids are playing in the backyard. <laughs> so if you can hear them, that's what is happening. Um, this one is just the um, letter, the just the portions of the chart that are for the temperatures. There's no extra stitching, but I do have in my Facebook group which is just for people stitching my designs. It's not stitching along with me personally. Um, I have some numbers charted. So if you would like those numbers, I can email them to you as well. Because somebody last year wanted to do this this year and wanted to get started before the change of the year because she was doing no new starts or something and wanted to be able to put 2021 at the top without cheating. Because <laughs> you really can't start this until after the first of the year. Because you don't know what the temperature is going to be. So anyways, I put in a couple letters and they're both pretty boring. This is 28 count, one over one, full crosses on some mystery light blue, pale blue, even weave. This E had three colors in a row that were the same and then the last one was different. This one, the first one was the same and then, or different, and then the last three were the same. So kind of boring, but at least it went quickly because then I wasn't changing my floss very often. So there's that. I was noticing Compared to this one, which I believe is 2017, this year had a colder January. We had a colder March this year. Um, not We didn't get as hot this year. I didn't use my hottest ones. October was colder this year, but so far November is warmer this year. So it's just so different. You know, it's very interesting. Every year is a surprise, which is what I like about these patterns. It's kind of fun. You don't really know what you're going to stitch and you start to see the weather in 
from the from the viewpoint of oh I get to stitch a new color today <laughs> which is kind of fun so my other one that was travel stitch was autumn beauties by the fat quarter shop this was a mystery stitch along throughout the month of October and I'm still finishing it up I'm really hoping to get this done in November because I want to I don't really want to work on fall anymore once we get into December so uh, we have my kids are off school all week this week so I won't have any of that kind of travel stitching but we will have quite a few family get-togethers so I'm hoping I'll bring this with me for family get-togethers in hopes that that will give me some time to get this done so we'll see and I also have a little bit of time next week so before December starts so here is this now making progress this is on the called for everything called for 14 count oatmeal Ada by the fat quarter shop and the classic colorworks floss that's called for it also has a DMC conversion this I was kind of going back and forth doing a, a length of thread in the border and a length of thread in the flowers and kind of back and forth so I finished that light yellow in these flowers and I still have this darker yellow to do in all the flowers as well as the pumpkin but I think that's it for the interior stuff and then the rest of the border so not too bad I guess we'll see yeah so it's coming along I'm hoping this will I also for sure want to get this done this year because I think I'm just gonna gift it to my sister at Christmas so that's the plan for that one I did work on my Mill Hill Hummingbird on Monday so that's what this one is and I've been doing a buttons of beads kit most Mondays putting in one two three links of, of thread Lately, it's been less because I've been busy, but I did put in two links of thread, I think, and I did some light blue around the hummingbird. This will be the last I work on it until January. So this is, I did make a little progress since last time, and this will be the stopping point again until, until January or until I finish the other mill hill that I just started. <laughs> Oh, I just remembered I didn't bring my finish over. I'll have to pause at some point and show you that. So, <clears throat> so anyways, this is fun. I worked on this light blue here and here, I believe. So now you can see the, it's all complete above the hummingbird and the flower. So that's really fun. And I was planning to start this in December. So it's not really a change of plans. It's just a little bit early plans but the there was on I found it on Instagram I believe because I'm really far behind on floss tube but cat talks and miss T and stitches calico whimsy and a few others great reads I don't know there's there's like two or three others that I noticed because I was following the hashtag who have started Mary Millhill and they were starting this past Friday so I thought well I was planning to start my Mill Hill ornament the first Monday in December to do for Mill Hill Mondays. So might as well just start it with these ladies and have fun with that. So I started snow crystals on Friday and I didn't have any time. I was already planning to do something else with that day. So ice crystal, sorry, it's called ice crystal. Snow crystals is the line. There's several different ones and I have the one called ice crystal. I got this, I believe, for my husband in my stocking like two or three years ago. Finally getting it out and doing it. Only three colors of floss, so I have this strawberry floss keep, so I put those on there. And this is my start. Just the tiniest little bit. I have like half a length of thread. It called for three strands, and I went ahead and did it because it's dark paper. Maybe it will need better coverage than the other buttons of beads I've been doing. So I went ahead and did three strands, but therefore I'm not using the loop start, so it's a lot longer piece of string. So this is likely closer to one length of thread that I would have done on Hummingbird, but it's only like half a length of thread for now. So I went ahead and did that with whatever little time I had, and today's Monday, so I'll be working on this some more. So hopefully 
I'll get some structure to maybe do a good amount of the stitching today and then do some beading on those other days. That'll be fun. So that's exciting. It's got some lots of bugles and, and regular beads and then this little, I don't see it in here right now, but I'm assuming it's in here. This little charm down here too. Here it is. There's a snowflake charm. So yeah, there, that's fun. So I will be working on that now, I guess, until on Mail Hill Mondays. Hopefully get it done before Christmas, can hang it up on the tree, and then I'll go back to Hummingbird, either in the new year or whenever that's finished. Um, my regular daily stitching now that I'm trying to do every day, it hasn't happened every day, but many days, I'm working now on knit Knitting Woman for ideally 50 stitches a day. Some days have been less, some days have been a little bit more. There was a, I think yesterday I was working on this. I actually worked on like three different colors because I kept finishing colors and there were only like eight to 10 stitches <laughs> in the first couple colors. So I, they were some in her uh, bodice back here and they were also down in the yarn balls and that was it. It was like, two stitches here and three or four stitches here. So I was like, well, let's just be done with that color. And then I had some more, up here is where the start of the color, the highest point I have that I'm picking colors from. So it was some of the uh, bodice colors and some of the shading on her skin. So I did a little bit more skin also. <clears throat> and so here is where I'm at now. Hopefully you can see a little bit of change. This is 22 count Ada, two over one half stitches. Yay, so fun. So I, as you can see, hopefully there's a little bit of more definition in the skin as well as her little bodice back here and some of the yarn ball down here. This is, I think there's two more stitches till I reach the bottom right here. So this one might be the bottom, I can't remember, but very close to the bottom. And it's really nice to have a little bit of a structure throughout here so I can color complete. So I think I've finished like three or four colors since I picked this back up last week. So that's pretty fun. So yeah, I'm enjoying that. I'm basically doing one length of thread a day regardless of how many stitches it gives me unless it's less than 50 by a significant amount and then I'll pick up a second to a second color or a third color like I did on Sunday where I um the first two colors were very small amounts of stitches if it's like gives me 30 or 40 stitches I'll just finish the string finish the color and move on if it's more than 50 and my thread gives me you know 60 70 stitches and then I run out perfect so that's kind of my thought on that after, let's see, my main, my main project was my Leaning Tower of Macarons by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, which I need to go get. So I no longer have the cover picture because I think I threw it away already. <laughs> it's a digital pattern, so I just threw away the paper copy I had printed out, but it's finished, so it's okay. So here's my cute little bookmark that I've made for my daughter. Her birthday's in a couple weeks, so I'm gonna give that to her. And she loves these little macarons because there were some blue ones in an episode of The Mandalorian that Baby Yoda was eating and using the force to get from somebody. And so she just loves these. And we're actually getting her some toy ones too to play with with her stuffed animals and stuff. So I thought these turned out really cute. I adjusted it just a little bit so that it lined up straighter and I shrunk the plate so it was more um, bookmark size, more convenient for a bookmark. And I may, I was thinking I don't want to back it with felt because it'll make it too fat for a bookmark, but then it occurred to me that I can back it with scrapbook paper. And I think that will work nicely to cover up my ends, protect them a little bit from getting pulled, and then it'll still be nice and thin. So I'll probably go find some scrapbooking paper and um, somehow glue that on safely. I'm not really sure how to do that because I'm leaving this empty space to make it stay in bookmark shape. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. 
<laughs> of how to attach that because I may just give it to her like this and because all my ends are tucked in so it sh shouldn't be too bad but anyways <clears throat> that's exciting I finished that and then the same day I finished that I started the ice crystal ornament so my whip count is a wash and I actually updated my whip works in progress list on my computer on Sunday afternoon and I made sure to add in everything I'm working on minus my temperature pieces because those are technically shop models so I don't think they count as personal projects. I have 87 projects I think possibly <laughs> and I think I'm gonna start another couple before the end of the year but we'll see. That's the plan anyway. So when I once I finished that I went ahead and started working on <clears throat> my Cozy Cafe Club, also by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. This is their mystery stitch along for the month, for the year of 2021. So we have one part a, a month and we started in March. This is the November part, pumpkin spice latte with the cute little fox mug. And I believe last time you saw this, I had finished apple cider. It was September. <clears throat> so this time I got started on that cute little fox mug. This is 25 count vintage cloth in the color prim. And I'm doing it one over one, full crosses. So, some slight alterations to make it more me and the borders are in fancy floss. So this was fun. I got at least 543 stitches and then I did a little bit more and just didn't didn't count any more than that. But the reason I know is because I joined a new Facebook group. It's not a new group. I'm new to it. I joined the Magazine Monthly Challenge Facebook group, which is hosted by Carolyn Zook and over at C Zook Stitching, I think, maybe. And I'll link her below. And her friend Robin, I'll have to check and see if her Robin has a channel or Instagram or something, but because I should follow her too. But their, their group has always seemed inviting to me and part of it is I like the thought of doing an acrostic every month because with an acrostic they'll give you um a few letters so la this in November I believe it was home and I didn't do home because I just started this week and I figured I'm too late into the year to worry about that I'll start in December December's is the word sparkle so for each letter you Pick something in your projects that, you, that either starts with the letter S, has something in it with the letter S, somehow you can tie it to the letter S, and you pick your own goal. So there's no forced structure. So you don't have to count stitches if you don't want to. You don't have to track time if you don't want to. You could say, I want to work on this many days, or I want to finish it, or I want to get this section done. You could pick your own goal, however that works for you. And I like the flexibility of that. I like that I may not need to bother posting pictures if I don't care about the prizes. It's, if I care about the prize, maybe I'll make an effort to post pictures depending on how I'm, what, how much free time I have at the moment. But what was fun about this one is they had a pop-up challenge this weekend um, to stitch on something with a gourd. Oh my gourd <laughs> was the name of the challenge. And they said, Side note, pumpkins are considered gourds. So this little pu frosted pumpkin had the two little candy pumpkins in it. So I figured that works. I'm planning to stitch on that anyways. So I went ahead and signed up for that pop-up challenge and counted my stitches until I got over over 500, got the little pumpkins done, and then all the stitches in that section that had the same colors as the pumpkins and posted my before and after pictures. And then I stitched a little bit more later that day and just didn't count stitches the rest of the time. But that was fun. And I think going forward, that'll be really something that I can embrace without feeling overwhelmed. So I'm excited to try that. And I'm gonna try it starting in December. <clears throat> and every once in a while, they have something more complicated available to you to participate in, like a bingo board or these pop-up challenges. And those I'll have to wait and see how I'm feeling that month or that weekend if I want to participate. But the general monthly acrostics I think will be helpful to give me a little bit of fun and structure with my planning 
without being too structured. And I think the other thing I like about it, the past several months I've already been planning every month for what I'm going to do roughly for the rest of the month. And so it's nice to have only a monthly challenge for the most part where you kind of plan your month out and then just work on it rather than um, redoing your plans every week or every other week um, like a lot of the other challenge groups do. That was a little bit too much for me. So I think this group will be really fun. So because of that, I also don't think I'm going to limit myself to 22 whips next year. I had I had a thought of maybe, oh, I could do 22 projects and then every quarter I could re revisit that, that 22 and like switch out the seasonal ones or anything that I'm just not feeling <clears throat> or a new start I'm planning for that quarter. And that was a good thought. But when I came to the realization that I think this challenge group will work for me, I'm thinking I'll just leave it open. I'm good with that. What I think I will do though, is to make sure I, I would still like to touch all my projects. I think that's the other thing with the 22 projects that I don't want to neglect any, any of them. So <clears throat> in the back of my journal, there's just general note pages. So I'm thinking I'm gonna list all of my whips, possibly broken up into size categories or style, like maybe mirabilia's full coverages, that kind of thing. And, um, and put little check mark stickers or, or something whenever I've worked on it at least once so that I know which ones I, as the year goes on, I can see, oh, I haven't really given this one any attention this year. I should probably try to work that in, you know? So I'm thinking I might try to do that. I attempted to do that this year, but it wasn't in my planner. So I think having it in here will be easier to access than if it's just in a paper floating around somewhere that I forget, forget to go find when I'm recording what I've done that day. So I think having it all in one place will help me do that. And I think I'm happy with that thought. So plans for this week. I'm gonna continue to work on Cozy Cafe Club because I wanna finish this guy. He's so close. He has a good amount of chunk stitching left. He has all the whipped cream and his face and the words, and I'm gonna to wait to do the words until the next clue, which I believe will be here, until that comes out. They've been coming out on the 25th, and I believe the 25th is Thursday, which is Thanksgiving. So I'm thinking we might even get it on Wednesday, a little bit early. So I would like to keep going on this so I don't, so I can feel like I'm caught up and I don't have to worry about it anymore until December 25th, <laughs> when we have the last one on probably also a little bit early because that falls on Christmas. So I had been thinking of going to my letter L fairy this week, and it's still a possibility that this might come out if I get to a point where I'm done with the little fox mug, but the new clue hasn't come out yet. I'll bring this out. Worst case, I won't get to this this week and I'll bring it out next week because I do want to finish this this year. So it may or may not come out this week, but for sure, I believe next week. So I thought I would bring that to show you just in case where it's at right now. This is one that if I'm working on it in December, I could use it for the sparkle acrostic because it will have beads, which is fun to include the theme with, you know, the project, the overall theme kind of match that, but it also is the letter L and it, sparkle has an L in it. So that would work really nice. So this is my starting point. This is on the called for 32 count water lily linen by Witchell. And I've finished all the cross stitching in the fairy and the letter L. I still have some cross stitching in the vines. There's some of these green vines around here. And then the rest of the vine is beads. And there's also some other fritzy like swirls of beads and I do actually still need to, to stitch her wing which I, I usually have been adding karnic to the wings in addition to the like, blending filament in addition to the um cotton floss so there is I guess some more cross stitching there's some the vines and the wings and then all the beading so should be fun shouldn't take uh, forever but I may um that frosted pumpkin one may take a little bit too long to pull this out this week, but I'm showing you just in case. <clears throat> and then hopefully I'll also get to my the snowflake ornament this 
today for a little bit and my knitting woman um, every day for about 50 stitches a day before I get started on my main piece. So I think that's everything. And I already kind of talked plans. I just kind of threw it in there because I was thinking about it. So if you don't like plans, sorry. <laughs> you got it anyways. So <clears throat> yeah, I think that's everything. So I will go today or this week should be pretty busy with family things. But because of the family get togethers, I'm really hoping I can get some work on my autumn beauties while I'm out and about and get that close to finish. That'd be great. So with that, I will talk to you later and I hope you're having a wonderful week. If you're here in America, have a wonderful Thanksgiving, enjoying all the blessings that we've been given and enjoy your friends and family and happy stitching. Bye.